have a clue how this game plays or what it really is so i'm gonna break it down to you the best way i could and give you my kind of first three four hours of impressions for the game the game right off the bat is pretty ugly you're looking at it you're like this is early ps3 ps2 level type stuff there's no lying that this game was obviously made in mind to save budget it was either producing only on vita and then just went to the ps3 and the PS4 just to get more money. Don't know the reason, but it's not a very pretty game. Let's get that out there right now. Also, the menus look ancient and old, and so do the level up system, and just everything feels old and outdated. Okay, that's at the absolute worst of the game, in my opinion. There's stuff, though, that is not too great that I'm going to get to. But let's talk about what the game is. You pick these characters, or you get these characters in the beginning, and as you progress through the story, you get more characters. Now, what they do is all have their own abilities and own way of fighting, um, and then you want to kind of format them, put them in position to link. Now, when you link, all your characters will attack together in unison, or not, not all together at once, but all like one after another which would make eliminating a lot of enemies pretty easy. Now, when you first view it, you're thinking, oh, this is a big open world map you can travel around and on the level and just go next to an enemy, but it's not the case. You get the, there's these things that are squares, correct? And you get to go through the square, like a, a, a certain part of the section is square. You go to the next square, that's the second square, then the third square, you understand? Now the thing is, you can't go into the enemy's square. You go next to their square and you can attack them. This brings up a whole new kind of tactical thing. What I, what I mean by that? Okay, say you have a warrior uh, and you have uh, two warriors and a, a woman who shoots at the gun, right? Now, you want to put the woman either behind your character in the same square, the same, you know, the melee character, you want to put the gunman behind the melee, or you want to put the gunman in the square before that. Now, why would you do that? Well, the enemy, if they can only attack with a sword or close range weapon, they cannot get to the gunman. Why? Because there's a square, and you have to kill the enemy to advance to the next square. So this brings up a whole thing where if you have a really good defensive tank, he will protect that square and take all the damage while everybody else kind of in the back doing their magic and gun. So, it's not like the most in-depth type strategy, but it works pretty well for the most part and makes some situations really good. Now, saying that, the game is very, very hard. They even had to patch the Japanese version to make it easy enough for people to beat, so you know this is hard. Um, you never feel overpowered. You just don't. The only time you would feel overpowered if you revisit a stage from the very beginning of the game once you're three or four hours in. And even then, there's a chance that the enemies could fucking mindfuck you by surrounding you and just shitting on your face. But the majority of it is that you will not ever feel overpowered. Why is that? Because these enemies will swing and fucking kill you. I don't mind that. I played a lot of strategy RPGs. There are some tougher ones than others. If I die, I accept it. What I don't like is the fact that when your character dies, game over. No, this is a mechanic that's just not not cool in video games anymore. Not when there's stuff like bringing back the player on death or losing them to change the story and so on. You can't have it where when a character dies, it's game over. That is the most boring fucking thing and most frustrating fucking thing because really... How about if you slip up and you gotta redo the whole stage? Which gets to my next big fucking major problem. Everything is so slow in this game. Everything is double check. XXXX before you can move on to the next person, his action. Then you gotta watch all the goblins move. Then you gotta do blah blah blah. There's no skipping cutscenes. So on. So you see what I mean? It's very, very annoying if your character dies. Otherwise, it's pretty interesting because you never know who you're gonna face, and sometimes they'll just come in and boom, 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 you're dead. It's over. You didn't even know what the fuck you just fought. You didn't know that you had to run. You didn't know anything. Which makes it really interesting. But. I'm not going to get my full review because I'm going to play about another 5 to 10 hours, get really into it, and I'll tell you in my verdict if these complaints kind of flip once I learned all the game's tactics. But right now what the game is, is a mix of kind of Valkyria Chronicles and kind of like an old fashioned strategy RPG like Disagia with the squares, but it's different and I can't really explain it, uh, I don't have my, my footage fucking device broke so I have to steal these trailers from YouTube which pisses me off 
But if you have any questions about the game, please list them below. I will try to answer as best as I can. Um, some questions I got are, um, is there Japanese voice acting? As far as I can see, no. But the English voice acting isn't horrible. I've seen, I've heard, I'm sorry, far worse. Um, is the story going to win a war? No, but it's entertaining sometimes with some of the lines that make you laugh. Um, but yeah. I'm going to shut up now. Uh, if you have any questions, list them below. And check out my channel in a couple of days for the full-on review. And that's going to be with me and my friend Slasher, hopefully. If not, if he's not up to it, it'll definitely get out. Um, probably by, I would say, Thursday uh, or Friday. So, look out for that. Alright, everybody have a good one. Peace.